Hey guys, it's Brett. Thanks for dropping by my channel. So today I want to talk about six upcoming spring releases that you should have on your radar. One of them is dipping almost into summer, but it's close enough that I thought I'm going to talk about it now versus later. So stick around. All right. So before we get started, a um, couple things. I want to talk about what I'm in the middle of reading now, but also I wanted to show you this device that I got. Um, it's called the Books Reader. I'm sure I've, I've been seeing some people on BookTube with this and have been talking about it, which gave me total FOMO. Um, I saw it first on Ollie's page on Criminali, who had been reviewing it and had just gotten it. And I thought, I really want to try this. Um, what it is, is it, it's, it looks like a phone, but it's nothing more than a an e-reader that is compact and I've even put the little thing on the back. I've not really used it yet because um, first of all they're they're built in China and they're hard to get so I really wanted a white one but I'm a big user of the Kindle Scribe. I, I absolutely love this thing and now I've tried to use it also for all my note-taking for work. I use it for work but traveling and like having this last year when we went on vacation and I took this down to the beach and it got really heavy to sit on a beach with so and I have a normal Kindle as Kindle 2 but I just liked the compact idea of this I'll show you what it looks like um when it's on you know I have to be honest, I was showing this to my son yesterday and he said, why don't you just use the Kindle app on your phone? And I was like, well, because, you know, you don't, this is e-ink, so it's lighter on your eyes. He just gave me that expression. So we'll see. It, I may find that I don't use this as much as I think I will, but I'm going to try to. And certainly for, for nighttime reading, it's really easy it's very light you can also listen to ebooks on this so it's for me just a designated reader <laughs> much like kindle but i wanted to share it i don't know if it's interesting to you anyway uh i'll get back to you later with more of what i think about this okay um or if i've just wasted a chunk of change the two things I'm currently reading at the moment, ours, I'm reading this with a group over on Instagram. We're a little over halfway. We've been doing like 25 pages a day of this nearly 600 page novel. Um, it is dense. It's, it, I'm, I'm really enjoying it, but I have to say we were talking in the group chat the other day and I have never, uh, I've never gone so far in a book without knowing what the hell is going on and not quitting. I absolutely want to know what's going to happen next. I'm absolutely driving forward but there's been plenty of times that i'm like i really don't know what's going on um also there's a lot more magical realism in this than i had anticipated and i don't mind magical realism but um for anybody who's seen this book or thought about this book i'm just saying and i'll have a full review of this when i'm when i finished it but it is heavy 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 on the magical realism all right, the other thing I started the day before yesterday and I'm going to finish today because I can barely put it down is this book Sociopath by Patrice Gagné, which comes out April 2nd, as it says right there. And um, thank you to Simon Schuster for this. This thing is a roller coaster ride. This is a, a memoir about a woman who realizes very early on that something is off about her. And she knows that like the other kids see it too. And she begins to recognize um, not particularly a pension for violence, but certainly she has no uh, kind of emotional feelings. She feels no empathy. She doesn't feel sadness. She doesn't feel love. And it's a very kind of weird thing, the way it presents itself. And these feelings of how to kind of keep in check this brewing thing of what's happening, it's fascinating. So she becomes, she gets her PhD because she there is so little about sociopathy in uh, the psychological journals anywhere and so she really wants to find a way to help people who have this which by the way like five percent of the population would fall under the 
description of a sociopath. And it doesn't mean like they're a killer. That's a psychopath and it's running parallel lines, but slightly different. All of that's in here. Uh, it's truly compelling. You know, it's no surprise to me that it's already been optioned because um, the story itself is so crazy and her childhood, I, I don't want to say too much. All I'm saying is like, I've, it, it's it's really compelling. It's really fascinating. She's going to be in LA um, for the book launch and I'm going to try to go uh, because a friend of mine actually knows her and they went to school together. So I'm, I'm interested to hear her speak. But this comes out April 2nd and it's really, really, really good. Okay, so the six books. Um, I'm going to go over them by release date of, of what's closest to, uh, you know, to the furthest. The first is How to End a Love Story by Yulin Quang. Now, the interesting thing about this is, first of all, I am not generally a rom-com person. Um, I did read Red, White, and Royal Blue and really liked it. I read two Emily Henry books. Here's the thing. Yulin is also a director and a screenwriter. She has... Uh, adapted Emily's Hen Emily Henry's People We Meet on Vacation, and she is going to be directing Beach Read, which is one of Emily Henry's books as well. So um, she knows a thing or two about the rom-coms. Let me read you this. Helen Zhang hasn't seen Grand Shepherd once in 13 years since the tragic accident that bound their lives together forever. Now a best-selling author, Helen pours everything into her career. She's even scored a coveted spot in the writer's room of a TV adaption of her popular young adult novels, and if she can hide her imposter syndrome and overcome a writer's block, surely the rest of her life will fall into place too. L.A. is the fresh start she needs. After all, no one knows her there except Grant has done everything in his power to move on from the past, including building a life across the country. And while the panic attacks have never gone away, he's well-liked around town as a screenwriter. He knows he shouldn't have taken the job on Helen's show, but it will open doors to developing his own projects that he just can't pass up. Grant's exactly as Helen remembers him, charming, funny, popular, and lovable in ways that she's never been. And Helen's exactly as Grant remembers too, brilliant, beautiful, closed off, but... Working together is messy and electrifying, and Helen's parents, who have never forgotten Grant, have no idea he's in the picture at all. Clearly, I like that. When secrets come to light, they must reckon with the fact that theirs was never meant to be any kind of love story. And yet, the key to making peace with their past and themselves must ju just lie in holding on to each other in the present. So, this comes out April 9th, but expect to be hearing a lot about and from Yulin Quang in the future. All right, this one coming out uh, May 28th from Hogarth Books, and thank you, Hogarth, for this copy, Housemates by Emma Copley Eisenberg. I just finished this. I loved this book. This is about... Um, uh, two women, two, I was like, this is about two women, two lesbians who um, are housemates and a group of four women living together. One of them is a writer and the other one is a photographer. The photographer, she uh, went to college and kind of was under the, um, she was mentored by this brilliant photographer who then kind of gets taken down by the Me Too movement. The two of them end up going on a road trip together, and this is the story about what happens on the road trip. Uh, this is Emma Copley's Eisenberg's first fiction book. She has a nonfiction book called The Third Rainbow Girl, which I have not read, but I thought this was a fantastic debut. I loved these two characters. Um, I fell in love with them instantly. I found them really relatable, sympathetic, um, really realistic, and kind of in a messy way. I was just completely charmed by this book. And as you could tell, I, I, I tabbed it a lot because I just thought her writing was so, 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 so good. So please check this out, May 28th. Um, but uh, I was completely charmed by this. Speaking of charmed, I've not read it yet, but 
The Gunkle Abroad by Stephen Rowley. And thank you to Putnam for the copy of this. This comes out May 21st. Of course, it doesn't need a lot of explanation, especially if you were someone who loved The Gunkle as much as I did. Um, this one uh, takes place five years later. Patrick O'Hare is summer caring for his niece Maisie and nephew Grant after their mother's passing. Now in New York, having successfully relaunched his dormant acting career, Patrick feels on top of the world professionally, but some things have had to take a backseat. Looking back down both barrels at 50, Patrick is single again and breaking things off with his partner, Emery. At least he still has family to lean on. When Patrick's brother Greg announces he's getting remarried in Italy, Maisie and Grant are not thrilled. But it's up to Patrick to get them on board, but when they arrive in Italy, Patrick is overextended, managing a groom with cold feet, a growing rivalry with the kids, charming soon-to-be Launt, lesbian aunt, and two moody young teens trying to adjust to a new normal. Will saving the day really help him repair his own life? Gracing the page with his signature blend of humor and heart, Stephen Rowley charms with his highly anticipated sequel to the beloved story about the complicated bonds of family, love, and what it takes to rediscover yourself, even at the ripe old age of 50. Rude. <laughs> so anyway, I'm really excited about this one. Um, I love Stephen, and um, so can't wait. Next up, coming out, May 14th, The Ministry of Time by Kayleen Bradley. Uh, and thank you to Avid Reader Press for this. And I, this is a book that I believe you're going to hear a lot of. This seems ripe to be a book club pick. I just feel like Avid Reader Press is putting so much pre-publicity blitz on this book. Uh it says, already an international sensation, rights sold in 17 languages, a TV adaption in the pipeline after a 21-way auction. It's an, it's an ingeniously imagined, hilarious romp through time, space, and the human heart by an exhilarating new voice in fiction. So, the Ministry of Time, check it out. All right, uh, the next, out May 21st, um, The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. I did not read The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, Evelyn Hardcastle. Actually, I've never read any of his stuff. This is the funny thing. I own all of it. Don't we all do that? You're like, you, you just get stuff, you're like, I'm going to read this. Also, his books are the kind of books that all of the bookstores do special editions of with like gorgeous spread edges and i've seen the many of the advances for this already have like the green edges they're all stunning and i'll probably buy it despite the fact that i've read none of them and could not even tell you if i like him as a writer but again really interested in this one that i will probably do the same thing um from the best-selling author of the seven and a half deaths of evelyn hardcastle and the devil in the dark water comes an inventive high concept murder mystery it's an ingenious puzzle an extraordinary backdrop backdrop and an audacious solution solve the murder to save what's left of the world Outside the island, there is nothing. The world was destroyed by a fog that swept the planet, killing anyone it touched. On the island, it is, it's idyllic. 122 villagers and three scientists living in peaceful harmony. The villagers are content to fish, farm, and feast, to obey their nightly curfew, to do what they've been told by scientists. Until to the horror of the islanders, one of their beloved scientists is found brutally stabbed to death. And then they learn that the murder has triggered a lowering of the security system around the island. The only thing that was keeping the fog at bay. If the murder isn't solved within 91 hours, the fog will smother the island and everyone on it. But the security system also wiped everyone's memories of exactly what happened that night before, which means that someone on this island is a murderer and they don't even know it. And the clock is ticking. Oh my god, doesn't this sound exactly like something that M. Night Shyamalan would... would <laughs> Would write. I mean, it's like from the director of The Sixth Sense, The Last Murder at the End of the World. Um, I don't know. I think it sounds really good. What do you think? So, again, uh, 521, check it out. And the final book, which actually comes out June 11th, so we're getting a little bit of jump start on the summer reads, is Margot's Got Money Trouble by Rufy Thorpe. Um, I loved The Knockout Queen by Rufy. 
uh, and this is supposed to be even better. This is also um, currently going into production. It's being written by right now by David E. Kelly, who's going to produce the series for Margot's Got Money, Money Troubles. So let me read you a little bit about what it's about, if I can. Um, So let me read you a little bit about what it is about. Margot Millet's always known she'd have to make it on her own. After a disastrous affair with her junior college English professor leaves her with a baby, no job, and a risk of eviction, Margot has to pull herself up by the proverbial bootstraps to keep a roof over her head and her baby fed. She turns to OnlyFans, utilizing surprising apt advice from her ex-pro wrestler father on how to make her audience fall in love with her. To her amazement, it works, earning her enough money to feel secure for the first time in her life. But does internet fame come at too high a cost? So very timely with the OnlyFans. Uh, so it sounds great. We'll see. Uh, but check it out. Again, this comes out June 11th. And thank you to William R. Books for this. All right, guys. So that are, those are my six books to look for this spring that are coming out pre-order them or you pre-order your books check them out put them on hold at the library whatever you need to do i hope you're all having a great week wherever you are and again thanks for stopping by and i'll see y'all soon